the U.S. is using the Defense Production Act to require companies to notify them when they're training large language models. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. One of the big themes for 2024 was always going to be the growing importance of the conversation about artificial intelligence in Washington, D.C. Of course, last year we got President Biden's executive order, and some of the fruits of that are starting to bear now. U.S. Secretary of Commerce Gina Raimondo has announced more details about requirements for companies training large language models, with the government saying that the Defense Production Act authorizes them to get notification when those companies are training advanced models. Said Raimondo at an event at Stanford University's Hoover Institute last week, we're using the Defense Production Act to do a survey requiring companies to share with us every time they train a new large language model, and share with us the results, the safety data, so we can review it. Now, Raimondo tried to minimize how burdensome this sort of notification requirement is going to be, calling it, quote, just a quick heads up we're building powerful LLMs that might be a major national security risk. Relatedly, Raimondo said, quote, we're beginning the process of requiring U.S. cloud companies to tell us every time a non-U.S. entity uses their cloud to train a large language model. Now, this is something that's gotten increasingly popular and I think is going to be an even bigger discussion going forward which is monitoring cloud usage as a way to keep tabs on who is potentially training advanced models. Now, in some ways, these might seem simple, but they are likely to be controversial. So I will keep you posted as discussion about these new policies kicks up. Meanwhile, over in China, it's not just notification, but approval that is required by the government before companies can release their AI models to the public. Last week, Chinese regulators granted approval to a group of 14 new LLMs for public use which represents the fourth batch of approvals that China has granted. Overall, China has approved more than 40 AI models in the first six months since they began this approval process. It appears that so far, the most used Chinese chatbot is Baidu's ErnieBot, which according to that company's CTO, has more than 100 million users. In terms of what's different about this new batch, it appears that it's not just generalist models, but a number of them are actually industry-specific LLMs as well. Those include LLMs focused on cybersecurity and video solutions. Now, speaking of LLMs, Limsys Chatbot Arena is a crowdsourced platform for LLM evaluations that has collected over 200,000 human preference votes to rank LLMs with an ELO rating system. A big jump on that Arena leaderboard has come from Bard's new Gemini Pro version, which has jumped above everything except GPT-4 Turbo. Currently, the rankings are at 1, GPT-4 Turbo, at 2, Bard with Gemini Pro, at 3, GPT-4-0314, at 4, GPT-4-0613, at 5, Mistral Medium, at 6, Claude 1, and at 7, Claude 2. Now, as many pointed out, Gemini Pro is not Gemini Ultra, and so for many, this has reignited excitement about what Gemini Ultra might actually be able to do. However, some aren't buying it. Anjani Midha from A16Z writes, BART is the only model in this list with internet access, which the table should make clearer. Open book versus closed book exams should be graded differently. Moving back to a story from last week, you'll remember me discussing a robocall that New Hampshire Democrats got from what turned out to be an AI-synthesized President Biden urging them not to vote in that week's election primary, saying that their vote only mattered in November. Well, a cybersecurity research firm, Pindrop Security, was able to identify that it had been Eleven Labs platform that had been used to make that voice, and once Pindrop Security shared that information with Eleven Labs, they were able to figure out who the user was and suspend that account. Expect this process to play out a lot more during this election season. A new interesting AI feature from Apple, Apple Podcasts is now offering AI-generated transcripts. This is for the upcoming iOS 17.4, which is expected to come to users in March. Writes Apple Insider, the feature is new and still in beta, so there isn't any information on implementation or expected accuracy. Users should expect most, if not all, shows delivered through Apple's podcast network to be transcribed. For what it's worth, as a person who maintains multiple podcasts through Apple, we were all asked to sign new terms of service that reflected these changes. So yes, indeed, transcripts are coming to Apple Podcasts. Now, speaking of podcasts, one very cool company in the AI podcast and media creation space is Wondercraft. Wondercraft is in some of the same space as companies like Eleven Labs, with some overlapping features but is focused on being a really wonderful tool for creating audio content and then now also turning that into video content. The company has just announced a $3 million round, and I'm excited to see what they do with those resources. Now, as we get used to new tools and new interfaces, obviously a lot of people have switched their research behavior from Google to Perplexity. 
Well, now Next Generation Browser, Arc, has decided to make Perplexity the default search engine option. In a blog post on the Perplexity site, they write, by combining Arc's minimalist interface and Perplexity's intelligent search, we've created a streamlined browsing experience. No more sifting through irrelevant results or dead-end links, just fast, straightforward access to the information you need. Speaking of new features, Midjourney v6 has been out for a little while now, but they have continued to announce new features, and just recently they've released a set including panning, zooming, and varying part of a region, which lots and lots of the AI artists out there are getting very excited about. Now, lastly today, an interesting one about AI infrastructure. Blackstone is a massive private equity firm that manages basically a trillion dollar empire. And in 2021, the company spent $10 billion taking over data center operator QTS. At the time, the company had about a billion dollars worth of property under development, which has risen now in just a few short years to $15 billion, thanks in large part to increased demand for leased data center capacity because of artificial intelligence. Blackstone is now reporting that QTS could be one of the best investments in their history. So there you have it, folks. Lots and lots of interesting things to start your week. That's going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Next up, the main AI Breakdown.